All right, hello uh, everyone. This is a uh, follow-up video on the Subaru center differential um, viscous coupler rebuild. The um, the Subaru differential uh, viscous coupler from my previous video uh, made it fifty thousand seven hundred and seven miles and it began to show signs of failure. And so what I'm doing is I'm giving you an honest follow-up, uh, showing the mistakes that I've made. Um, and I'm gonna remove maybe the old videos because I don't want anyone to follow the wrong instructions. Everything I did on the viscous coupler was based off of the sources that I could find. No one else has shown a good uh, viscous coupler rebuild but what i've done is the best that i could and for what 20 bucks um, in materials uh it made it 50,707 miles uh, before it began to show signs of failure again the symptoms of a failed center differential are torque bind when the transmission is up to temperature and uh, when you are turning sharp at low speeds. It sounds like someone hitting your tires with a hammer, um, but it doesn't happen when your transmission's cold. So you won't have any symptoms when you start driving, but then when, let's say you leave your house in the morning, no symptoms. But then when you're parking in a parking lot, turning sharp at a low speed, you'll notice the symptoms like when you get to work. But then when you leave work, there'll be no symptoms, but then you'll feel the symptoms again when you're parking in your garage at home. Those are the symptoms. So we removed this uh, again. Again, it made it 50,707 miles. And the symptoms that I was experiencing was, wasn't was really bad torque bind. It, it was like a delay between uh, uh, drive in reverse or a little delay um, when accelerating. And the problems with the first rebuild compared to this one I'm doing is that the weight of the CST fluid was too low. 100,000 weight is not enough. I've gone with 200,000 um, weight CST silicone fluid. I've already driven it and it works way better. Um, so first thing I did was you can see this um, by adding the gasket maker in the previous rebuild I did, it held this together really good. And I can remove it now because I didn't use any welds. You can see the gasket maker here and uh, you know it didn't burst or anything it held up just fine I think uh, 50,707 miles is great considering what buying a new one is what six seven eight hundred dollars for these and uh, what I spent 20 bucks rebuilding this uh, 50,000 miles ago so I pulled this out I made the repair again I tested it it works better than before um, it's smoother there's less like vibration when I accelerate. So I believe that the uh, heavier weight, this is what I use, 200,000 weight CST silicone fluid works way better. And how, where I got this from, I got this from Amazon. It's on Amazon, eBay, uh, hobby shops with remote control cars. Cause this is for remote control vehicles. So I start the removal by pressing down in these spots here. <clears throat> And then ended up sticking a screwdriver in the sides and twisting the screwdriver sideways and it popped the top off as you can see there it popped the top off went to a bigger screwdriver i kept twisting it inside and it uh, brought this uh, whole top off <clears throat> real easy i mean this whole thing took like an hour to rebuild the first impressions when i removed this when I first did the rebuild from the original OEM condition of a failed um, viscous coupler is that there was more fluid in there. There needs to be more fluid. I did 45 to 50 milliliters. And when I took this apart, there were air bubbles in there, big air pockets. And you don't, you don't want that. You need it to be totally full. So I used this whole container, which was um, 60 milliliters or two fluid ounces, a little more than two fluid ounces. I just did the whole thing. So 
also there are a couple of wires in there for when I when I removed um, the back plate you want to go through there with the pick remove all the wires you need 12 wires and I believe there's 24 plates I went through and just double checked to make sure all the wires are out there and I just wiped it out I didn't I didn't remove any of this stuff like the first time I just went through and cleaned this with a paper towel just cleaned it wiped it out made sure it was nice and clean no water this time just kept it to paper towel I went through two rolls of paper towels just clean it really good and then what I did was I cleaned the wires this is how I clean the wires be real gentle with these if you bend or ruin one of these wires uh, the whole thing's ruined don't bend the wires and this you can see here the fluid broke down prematurely see how it's got a puddle here it's like an oily puddle the fluid broke down really quick it's because the weight was so low this thing was just free turning constantly I mean it, it wasn't really transferring the torque to the rear differential on the rear wheels very well all right work the rings off gently just being really careful you know and it, if you bend these wires it's better that they be bend outwards instead of inwards because uh, uh, if they're bent inwards there it's gonna cause problems all right so after I did that I'm cleaning each wire just wiping them dry and putting them in a pile done pile be real careful with the wires this is the fluid this is uh, what I got uh, two fluid ounces 59 milliliters I used the whole thing I, I'm not sponsored by anyone this is just what I got off of Amazon and I just dumped the whole thing in there so I clean all the wires and then this is the plate that goes into the coupler housing first that you're gonna put all these onto and this part here is the um, man I can't tell right now I'm just gonna wait before I say any say anything incorrect so this parts gonna go in first this is two different parts um, this inside comes out of that ring it doesn't matter so I wipe it down cleaning I'm just wiping it down then this plate goes in between what I just had and these wipe it down wipe it down so basically I'm just wiping everything down no water this time we've come to our senses no sense in using water I did wash these off with some brake cleaner because there was an oily residue um, on these discs I don't believe any oil made it into the coupler because there was so much uh, empty space in there I believe that the fluid just broke down really fast because the coupler was constantly engaged so we cleaning them all cleaning them all all I'm doing is wiping the gunk off and putting them over here clean them clean them clean them all right we don't need to watch this and I use the pick you got to use the pick to uh, separate them they're really stuck together pretty good all right after you got all the plates cleaned just keep them in order I'll go over the order but there's gears on the outside gears on the inside two different types of plates they have to be put in in order I right, clean that cleaned it a little bit I left that copper ring in there I tried to remove it you don't have to remove it oh and this is what I did just to make, make sure they're really clean just to remove all the residue use brake cleaner worked really good now when I first did this rebuild with the OEM um, part having failed uh, when I wiped it off there was no oily residue but in this rebuild there was an oily residue 
I do not believe it was from the transmission uh, leaking in. I believe it was a simply um, premature breakdown of the fluid. It could be that the remote control car version of CST silicone fluid is different than what would be used in an automobile. I can't say. Also, I never rotated my tires at all the whole time that I had this, which could have also caused it to be engaged more, um, leading to the premature breakdown. So I cleaned all these. So see how there's like a oily residue, and then you can tell they're dry here. Just wipe them off. Keep them in order. Don't bend them. All right, you don't need to see that either. Clean them all. Now they're clean. You want to make sure they're in order. You want to make sure that you have outer gear and inner gear in order. You can see I had two inner gears. You want them to be um, alternating outer gear, inner gear, outer gear, inner gear, like this. I also line these up when I put them in. When you look at the outer gear, pieces there's a gap in the teeth and I just uh, line that up straight I'll try to show that uh, when I put them all in all right I think we're gonna go to the next video oh and then I clean the wires too let's see if we can do the next video here all right after everything was cleaned we've got the center differential housing I, I marked where I had it and I cleaned it just wiped it out cleaned it some more and then what I did is I put this part in and I forgot that these are two separate parts so I took it out again and I separated them and in this part there's a little tab sticking out I don't know if you could if you saw it there there's a little tab you want to line up with that gap there press it into place I tapped it in with a 2x4 and then uh, looking through the holes here I just made sure that that um, tab was lined up with that little gap and that there was no gap underneath you want this seated all the way down so feel make sure there's no gap underneath because if that's not down you're gonna run out of space with your plates and then put this in It's got to go straight in. I think I didn't put it straight and had to redo it. You put that straight in. And then... Uh, da, 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 da. When you put this first plate in... i got to show this. This bottom plate, the burn marks or, or the stains show which side is up and the first type of plate you put in. So I clean it off. I put the uh, side with the markings facing up and this just rotates it doesn't go in any you know certain orientation just this side up and the first plate you put in you want to just have it match so this is a plate with the the teeth on the outside make sure that's all set in and here's where I put in the CST fluid now the trick to that this was a mess okay so what I did was you start pouring it out the best thing to do is pour it out and then just wait for it to drain out and it's slow but just take your time as the fluid comes down it'll pull itself out of the bottle so that's what I did I mean it don't try to rush it with the wire like I did just let it start draining uh, here we go so let it start draining and it'll pull itself out of the tube pretty fast and I put the first plate in you want gears on the outside first and I did that while I was holding the bottle, letting it drain. And this is why you also want to line up the holes. Unlike the first rebuild I did, I didn't line up these holes. It actually helped a lot lining up the holes when I did this, because then when I pressed down, the fluid could come up really easily, and it really helped with reassembly. So line up the holes. You can see it's coming out pretty fast now. It's pulling itself out of the bottle, and it uh, worked great. So I just filled the whole thing. You know, that only took a couple minutes. I'm just going around, filling it all the way up. And then I got impatient, got with to the, got in there with the pick again. It was not a good idea. Just work it all out. And you can see this, uh, 
the two milliliters, it filled it up more than 50%. And, uh, that, and that, that ended up being just right with a little bit extra. And you'll find out about that later, how I dealt with that. I line this up so that uh, the gaps line up with the holes. It really helped with pressing these down into place so the fluid could flow up. The order is outside teeth plate and then inside teeth plate and then a wire. You want to make sure the wire is pressed all the way down. All right, I won't skip this part so you guys can see. There is quite a bit going on here with this fluid. Uh, it's interesting, but just bear with it patiently. And then you push the wire in. You want to make sure it's inside these teeth, just like that. Push it all the way around. And what the wire does is the wire acts as a spacer for the third plate, which is outside teeth. And then you just start the process again. So that wire makes a gap a little bit bigger than the middle plate, which is the one with the gear on the inside. Again, I line up these holes and it allows the fluid to um, flow up through all the plates really well. Push it down. And I have to say this 200 weight actually has like similar viscosity to the 100 weight that I installed previously. So it also could have been just really low quality CST fluid from the first one I ordered. The first one I ordered was like, I don't want to say like, man, 20 bucks, but this stuff costs the same. But I don't know. It just, you know, I don't know. I'm not a chemical engineer. You do outside plate, you just repeat the process. So let's see here. Then I did a wire, outside plate, inside plate, wire, outside plate, inside plate, wire, outside plate, inside plate, wire, outside plate. And I added, and then I had put the bottle upside down to get a little bit more fluid out. And I got as much as I could out of there. I ended up taking out, I want to say like maybe five to eight milliliters I took out at the end because it wasn't closing. Inside plate. You can see by lining this up, these holes really made it easy to close this later. And I'll show that. And then you get your wire. Now the plates with the teeth on the outside, those teeth really press the wire down. So you want to make sure it's, it's in there. All right, do this. I press it down with a pick. All right, inside plate. Wire. Outside plate. Press it down. See, slow, steady pressure. Like you basically just apply pressure and it'll start moving slowly. Also watch this. As you push down, it'll, it'll slowly flow up. It gets more difficult the more layers you have, but if you line up the holes like I did, it makes it easier. Wire, outside plate, or outside gear plate. I press it down my fingers all the way around. More CST fluid, getting it all out of the bottle. It's better to have more than not enough. I ended up punching the bearing. Well, inside plate. Wire. Outside plate. It looks like I have two more wires, so that means I had five more plates to go. Like I said, uh, inside plate outside plate. So if I did the inside plate, there's a wire there. Yep. Wire outside plate, inside plate, wire. Gotta make sure that wire's in there. You don't want the wire overlapping these teeth. I think this was the last one is the trickiest one because if that wire is not inside the teeth and this plate won't go down, see how the wire is pushing out here? 
you can't have this wire doing that. Otherwise, that plate won't go in. Oh, here's the notch. See that little notch right there? If you can line up all those when you install this, that's an ideal installation. So see how I'm putting this plate in, and I don't think I noticed the wire at this time. I believe the wire's out, yeah. So see, it, it wouldn't go down, and that wire was out. So I worked the wire in. This is the last plate, and this is the most important one. You got to make sure that the plate fits under these teeth and that the wire is inside of it. Otherwise, you're going to have problems when you put the lid on. So I had to went around, just slow, steady pressure. I took the plate off. Yeah, this, here's that tab again. Line these up when you put it in, when you in, uh, reinstall, and the fluid will flow uh, more freely during insulation. So here's why I started running out of space, and I would just apply steady pressure. It's okay that you lose some CST fluid on, uh, on this part because, like I said, the two fluid ounces, the uh, 59 milliliters, was more than enough. I took out five to seven milliliters, I'd, I'd say, uh, at installation. Okay, made sure that wire was in. Did that top plate. You got to make sure it's below these teeth right here. All the way around. Because that top plate is flush with this metal and flush with this metal. There's no room for any mistakes. And then you put it in. So see here, it wouldn't go in past here. Um, I ended up having too much fluid in there and, and uh, found out the hard way. So we're going to skip through this. Tried the clamp. Would not go down. It just would not go down. Messed with it for quite a while. Tried four clamps. It wouldn't go down. Tried two clamps. It wouldn't go down. I cleaned and sanded this. Okay. The reason why I sanded this was so the gasket maker would have more grip on there. So sand it. Uh, took a little paper towel, went in the, um, the seam there. You want to make sure that seam where the ring goes in is nice and clean. And then the ring, I cleaned and sanded. So this is brake cleaner. I'm using to remove the old gasket maker, which worked great. Also, when I reinstalled this, I reinstalled it upside down. Um, so instead of bending outwards, it was bending inwards. So it would hold better. And then I sanded it. Yep, sanded the thing. And I sanded it uh, both sides and in between. See how I'm getting in between there? I'm sanding in between. This is, again, so that gasket maker really bites uh, into this thing and holds it into place. Because if this ring comes off, they're notorious for that. Um, it'll it'll ruin the coupler, and your um, a lot of bad stuff is going to happen uh, to your transmission if that happens. I'm talking uh, the the coupler will not be rebuildable if this comes loose. Um, but by installing this in the previous um, video I did, using the gasket maker, it held totally fine for fifty thousand seven hundred seven miles uh, without any issues. All right, so I cleaned it, cleaned it really good. We wanted a clean metal surface for the gasket maker to adhere to. Take your time on this part. Don't bend it. Clean it really good. Clean it really well. Okay, I don't need to waste more time with this. So this is where I, ch I kept trying to close it, and it just wouldn't go down. There was too much fluid in there, and there was air. And I just, when the ring was in there, it was just bulging out just ever so slightly, and I just I didn't want to deal with that. So I took a, uh, a valve puller, and I just pried up here, and I took it out. Because if you lift it from inside, like the start of the video, all the rings will come out again, and you'll lose your fluid. So I pulled it out. I'm just including this so you guys have a, a genuine idea what happened. So... Let's see. The top plate came off with the lit. Yep, so there's the top plate. What I did was I just scraped off this extra fluid. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, there's that top plate in there. I wiped the extra off. And this is why I tapped out the uh, bearing. Actually, it wasn't that hard. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Tap, tap, tapity, tippity, too. Uh, this is one it worked. Put it upside down on a 2x4 on the ground. 
and I tapped it and the bearing went straight into the wood. It was real easy to get out. I just tapped, oh, yep, there's a hole straight through. I just tapped next to it and just pried it out. It took three seconds. So now when I installed this, you can actually, I actually heard air come out of here and it went down effortlessly. This is the way to do it. In the previous video, I said it was unnecessary to um, uh, tap out the bearings. I recommend it now. You can see here, it just drops right in and air, the sound of air came out here. Watch this. Zoop. See that? All the air came out. The CST fluid went up to that hole and it went together so good. I didn't even need clamps. So let's show that again. Zoop. One more time. This is why you removed the bearing. Zoop. Went right down. So then uh, after I did that, I started installing the ring. Let's let this play for you guys. I just got it started. And then just like putting a key on a keychain, uh, you work it around. I think I had to do this twice. Let's see. I think I did it and it failed. Yep. And then this is the one that did it. I coated this with gasket maker in between the layers. Yeah, so I went around. And then after it was in place. So see how it's in place, but it's not in the seam. You want to you wanna get it in. So I just grabbed pliers and squeezed it until it went into place. I'm going to let this play. Okay, so I ended up using the clamp just to help it out a bit. That must have made a difference if, uh, if it's in this video. All right, yeah, so tighten it on. Yeah, there, now it went in. So let's see that again. So watch there. All right, see how it clicked in? That's what you want. This part's really important. Obviously, this is like the cherry on top. <laughs> you need to make sure it's all the way in there. I think this part can go in a little more. Yeah, that's all the way in. I would have uh, preferred to use oil resistant gasket maker, but I didn't have it on hand and I just use your, your high temp, high torque gasket maker. And it seemed to be much stickier and I, and I think it's good. So we just took a little bit more gasket maker and we just plastered it on there. Just went around, covered it with gasket maker. I ended up wiping it up a little bit later. And then here's where we put the ball bearing back in. This is super easy. Just set it in there. You just tap it in. It'll stop itself. It's uh, That hole is two different sizes and it can only go in so much. Got it started without a punch and then just tapped it in the rest of the way with the punch. And then you got to um, um, lock it in there. And how I did it was I got this um, this old, uh, yeah, I don't know what that's called, uh, because it's, it's hardened steel. And there's these little notches in there that are OEM. I just tap this in those little notches and, and uh, tap the metal in. And it locked it in place really good. It kind of closes the metal around the ball bearing. Yep. I don't know if you can see that, but it, it just, it just closed the mouth of that opening around the ball bearing and locked it into place. And, uh, that's it. That's how I built this thing, uh, rebuilt this thing. And I'm going to update this to, uh, uh, to YouTube.